Welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. I want to thank all the new subscribers. I want to thank all my old subscribers. I don't want to thank YouTube though, <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. What are we here to talk about today? Hard or soft? Yep, relax, get your mind out of the gutter. Hard or soft water. What does it mean? What does it mean to your fish? What does it do to your aquarium? And what does it do to you in general? So let's talk about it. Soft or hard? Water. So what is water hardness? Well, the easiest way to describe it is the level of minerals that are in the water. Hard water has high dissolved mineral content and soft water has very little. Now did you know that without the correct water hardness, you can't fix the pH levels inside of your tank. I know, you're saying, Vinny, what? Well, I'll explain it to you in a minute. Let's kick that intro. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell. Thank you. All right, real quick, remember, tomorrow, September 27th, 6.30, first ever live stream. Hope to see you there. All right, so the most common mineral you find in water is calcium. However, there's a lot of other minerals present. Most people's tap water is either slightly hard or soft. It depends on where it comes from. I have 7.0 neutral tap water, which is pretty good to work with. Well water from areas which have a lot of limestone and calcium is often very hard. And water that comes from the lakes and rainwater is open to void, devoid, devoid. Jeez, that, that's like I almost ate my own tongue. Devoid of minerals. It's important to understand, you know, how the water hardness, how it affects the pH in your aquarium. Hard water with a higher mineral content is usually very high in pH, and salt water is very low in pH. Now, the mineral in hard water it acts as a buffer that combats aridification in the water. The resulting water, it's gonna be more alkaline and have a higher pH. Now, we all know that some species of fish, they require hard water, while others require soft water. So, depending on, you know what you should do? Some people, you get fish that are, um, for whatever your pH is. Because I recommend, I recommend getting a test kit and testing your pH straight out of your tap, whether it's well water, whether it's city water, whatever it is. Let's see what pH we're working with first. Do we need to go up? Do we need to go down? Or do we just get fish that fit the pH we normally have? And that seems to save us a lot of work. Since I have a neutral pH, a 7.0, I'm pretty good on a lot of things. You know, I got a lot of uh, ups and downs to go there. I, so I don't really have problems. But for some of you that want to keep like a hard pH fish or, or a soft water fish, you know, you're going to have to test your, your source water. Now, don't just listen to me, do your research. Before you buy anything in this hobby, do your research. That'll save you a lot of problems. There's a wide variety of tropical fish available and at least a dozen different species suited for, for every type of water. Any decent book, do a Google search on aquariums, tropical fish, and it'll tell you what pH and hardness are required by your fish. So, you might be thinking, what is, uh, what is aquarium GH? In general hardness, why is that important to your aquarium? Well, the number one reason you should monitor the, the general hardness of your aquarium, it comes down to one word, osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is a natural process that your fish do automatically. It's like you and me breathing. It just happens. To put it simply, osmoregulation is the process of your fish balancing the salts and water inside their body with the salts and water outside their body. If an imbalance occurs, it can stress your fish out like crazy. In a severe case, it can lead to the death of your fish. This is why freshwater fish especially won't survive in salt water and vice versa. There's another reason why uh, GH is important. It's electrolytes. Uh, uh, these electrolytes aid in muscle and bone growth, digestion, uh, development of gills. It improves resistance to disease. It's pretty important stuff to be honest. Your fish, they need electrolytes to remain healthy. And the only place you can get them is from drawing from the water. But here's the thing. Water with no general hardness has no electrolytes for your fish to use. 
This can usually lead to some serious health issues. And hey, all you planted tank owners out there, even aquatic plants need some degree of electrolytes. Or for example, plants use calcium to grow. So if you have very soft water and the GH, it just might not be high enough for you to supply your plants and fish with the electrolytes, they need to remain healthy. So as you see, it's pretty important that your aquarium contains at least some level of GH. And also you should know that your GH of your aquarium can change over time. It can become lower in your tank because fish and plants use up the trace minerals. Or it could be that the GH is higher in your tank because calcium and magnesium are left behind when, uh, when water evaporates from your tank. Now, what GH is best for your aquarium? Like I said before, your ideal GH, it entirely depends on what you stock in your tank. Like I said, just go online. There's plenty of charts out there. And do yourself a favor, test Test your hardness of your of your source water. That would be the first thing I would do. While we're talking about water, let me tell you the story. So I'm down in the basement. I'm working in the top secret underground fish room, and I hear a knock on the door. So I go upstairs, and it's it's a group of locals uh, representing the town, and they're asking for help with uh, building a swimming pool. So I gave them a glass of water. Glass of water. Okay, here's a little homage. Jack and Jill went up the hill to do it in the water. Jack slipped, his condom ripped, and now Jack and Jill have a daughter. Oh, it's what I do. All right, <laughs> thank you for humoring me. But now I want to talk about something that I, I personally think is very important. Now we've been talking about hard water and how you should use a uh, soft water uh, conditioner inside of, your, inside of your house. But listen to me. You guys, you see that buildup on your shower head or when you get your pipes worked on, you, you see all that, that calcium, that buildup inside. Now, I'm not a scientist. Believe it or not, I'm not a scientist. But common sense tells me we're breathing that in as steam. Every time we take a shower, we're breathing all that in. Now, what that's doing, it's, it's getting inside our arteries and our veins and everything. And personally, I think that's why a lot of people are, are getting sick uh, with hardening of the arteries and, and things like that and high cholesterol. So what am I saying? Well, I'm suggesting you go out and you get a, a, uh, a filter. Now you can either get a whole house filter or you can just get a shower head filter because that's where most of your exposure comes from. Because most of us, I don't think, I don't know, does anybody drink tap water anymore? Or do, do we drink purified water? I usually, I, I don't even like the taste of water. It, ugh, I don't know. <laughs> Does anybody else not like the taste of water? All right, so I'm going to tell you the benefits of these shower filters. Number one, you're going to get sick less often. It, it, take a look at your shower head. You know how much nasty microorganisms and bacteria are lurking inside of that thing? And you're just going to pick up those germs and you're going to get sick from it. Number two, you're going to have you're going to have healthier skin and hair, right? Even trace amounts of chlorine have a profound effect on the body. Chlorine not only kills the bad bacteria that we don't want around, but the good bacteria too. When it washes over your skin, it destroys the vitamin E and the other fatty acids. And that's what keeps your skin soft and smooth. This can lead to dry, itchy skin, rashes. It can even give you acne. Now, the same thing happens to your hair. The chlorine in the water that you used to lather your hair, it strips all the natural oils, and that's why you walk around with that frizzy, messy head. All right, number two, sorry, number three, you're gonna feel better. Beyond the physical effects that chlorine has on the body, it also affects the mind. His studies have found that chlorine exposure can cause fatigue, mental depression, and a lower autoimmune function. Switching out your shower head for one of these filtered versions will help you feel more fit and alert. Now, here's the big one. Number four. This is the big one. This one could save your friggin' life. So listen, all right? Number four, you will lower your risk of cancer. Yes, you heard me right. You will lower your risk of cancer. Now, did you know this? Check this, check this stuff out, all right? When chlorine comes in contact with organic matter, like people, it combines with other compounds to form THMS, otherwise known as chlorination byproducts. Now these byproducts trigger the body to produce free radicals, which can cause cell damage. 
and are considered highly carcinogenic, like cancer causing. So the steam is like the same as uh, inhaling vaporized cigarette juice, if you can think about that. Now, the Environmental Defense Fund, they stated, although concentrations of these carcinogens are low, it is precisely these low levels the cancer scientists believe are responsible for the majority of human cancers in the United States. The study in my home state of Hartford, Connecticut, found that the women with breast cancer were 50 to 60% more likely to have high levels of chlorination byproducts in their breast tissue than women without. Another study at Brown University found a link between chlorine levels and bladder cancer. So switching to a shower head that's filtered may actually save your life. So look into this, all right? Do a little research. So what have we learned? Well, I hope you learned the hardness of your water is very important to your aquariums. And it's also very important to you. There's a lot of things we don't know about out there that they kind of, they kind of freaking hide it from us and it really annoys me. Like I was on so many websites and they're like, oh, the steam's good for you. It puts minerals in your, in your body. Listen, you get minerals from the food, you get minerals from the water you intake. Okay, breathing in, breathing in minerals is the same, what am I? I listen, I get nutrients from food that I eat too. You're never gonna see me try to breathe into my lungs a roast beef sandwich, okay? It's not the effective way to do it. And these chemicals, it's not just chlorine. Go and see what's in your water. Take it to a scientist, a real scientist, not me. And you're gonna see, that, oh my God, what, what is in our water? There's quaaludes in our water. Just stop it, all right? Stop telling me that's healthy. It's not, all right? It's not. If that pipe has all that crap in there, what do you think? My body's gonna take that and turn it into some goodness? No, no, it's not. And the same thing go for your fish. My suggestion, get a water test, see the hardness of your water, and see where you gotta go. If you're a beginner, hey, start out with fish that fit in that range. There's thousands to choose from. And if you're a long time person, then you're gonna figure out ways to lower and raise it. But it's very important, and remember, you can't fix your pH until you get the hardness right. So, to wrap it up with a nice little bow on top, that's what Vinny's got to say about hardness of water. Soft or hard, <laughs> you decide which one you like, all right? Thank you guys for joining me. Don't forget to live stream tomorrow, and click that subscriber button because YouTube is going through my thing like with a fine tooth comb. They are so far up my butt, it's driving me crazy. So show some support, subscribe to the damn channel, and I'll see you tomorrow on Vinny's Aquatics.